welcome back to my channel. Happy Vlogmas, day 27. I cannot believe we are within a week of a new year. That is absolutely wild to me, but I am so excited for today's video because a couple of weeks ago, I asked you guys on my community tab to tell me what your favorite and least favorite palettes were. And today I am reacting to your least favorite as well as your favorite palettes, giving you my thoughts, telling you if I agree, disagree, and just like having a conversation about your guys's favorite and least favorite palettes. I had so much fun reading through all of your comments. I have my list on my computer right here and I'm just so excited to chit chat with you guys about these palettes today. If you're interested in hearing about the community's favorite and least favorite eyeshadow palettes and what I think of your guys' opinion, um, which obviously you're entitled to, this video is all in good fun, uh, stay tuned. First, if you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project panning content, palette themed content, or just chit chatting about makeup, I'd love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on. And other than that, let's jump into the video. Alright guys, I thought that we would start with least favorite and then talk about favorites last. Many of the least favorite palettes I either have never owned, never tried, um, and some of them I also agree with. There are actually only two palettes named in the least favorite category that I personally currently own in my collection. I've read twice and again I tried to include everybody's in my list but if I miss something I do apologize. Twice I read the Charlotte Tilbury quads are a least favorite and specifically one comment said they're good but just not worth the money and I 100% agree with that. I have one Charlotte Tilbury quad currently in my collection. It's the Exaggerize quad and this is fine. I keep it around because this is a nice little like pocket palette very easy to travel with and truly like if I I'm like running out the door for work and want to do my eyeshadow but don't want to like think about it this is something that i would reach for although i really didn't reach for this at all in 2022 um i just do not feel like these like this formula is worth i think these are like 53 dollars somewhere in the 50s just not worth it and it seems like you guys that is your overall opinion as well so i agree with that one of you said the baked browns palette from dose of colors and man did my heart hurt when i read that but you went on to comment to say that it was a little bit too powdery and i will agree i think that the dose of colors uh matte like five pan palettes the formula is powdery so if that's something that you don't like i don't think that you will enjoy the dose of colors formula just because it is definitely more powdery this is something that i just included in my unused palettes in my collection last year actually both of my dose of colors five pan palettes went unused in my collection i do have two really large pans in this palette and i actually don't mind this formula i actually at one point felt like this was a favorite palette in my collection i think because it was just very easy again for me to like reach into this and i didn't really have to think about what i was creating again if i think about something that's going to be like quick for work this is something that i think about so this definitely is not a least favorite for me but i can see why if you don't like a powdery formula because dose of colors does have a very powdery matte formula so those are the only least favorite palettes that i currently own in my collection one of you commented that any palette from siate london was a least favorite for you and i used to love the siate london like pretty fun fresh palette i talked about it in palettes that i regret decluttering i ended up decluttering that for like i don't even know what reason um and it's been years since i've used that palette but i remember liking that one so much but i did go on to purchase the second palette that they did in collaboration with i think it was chloe morello is that correct um, and I was not as impressed with the second palette. And I also think Ciate London, just in terms of their makeup, has been hit or miss for me. So I can see how Ciate would end up on a least favorite palette list. I'm going to read from my computer because I have my list of everything else. So t I saw twice the Essence, like the Essence eyeshadow formula. Specifically, I believe it was the six pans I heard called out. And I'm not sure if this is referencing like newer Essence. I feel like there was a lot of popularity around like the new Essence eyeshadows. I will just say I have never really had luck with drugstore eyeshadow, even like the e.l.f. like quads. I just like, I feel like I'm just like a little bit bougie and a little bit like high maintenance when it comes to my eyeshadow and I don't mind paying a higher price tag for like higher quali quality packaging and I just prefer high end. Um, so I will agree. I think a lot of my least favorite eyeshadow palettes or formulas do come from the drugstore. Speaking of drugstore, I saw Wet n Wild on there 
which I actually really used to love my little like I like my were they eight pan or ten pan wet and wild eyeshadow palettes I ended up decluttering them I think because I was just trying to get rid of stuff in my collection and I didn't feel like the color stories were super unique to my collection and I paid less money for those but like, drugstore is definitely more likely to be decluttered for me as well just because I didn't spend as much money on it and there is something I love about just nice quality packaging as well um, I saw two people also mention the Maybelline eyeshadow formula. I specifically saw the Nude Palette series called out. I have never tried, I don't think I've tried Maybelline eyeshadows like ever. I will say I remember when like the Nude series I feel like was like kind of popular and being like talked about quite frequently on YouTube and there were so many times I thought about purchasing one of the palettes and then I didn't so it sounds like I should be thankful that I did. I saw someone mention um, a specifically it was a five pan eyeshadow palette from Ofra and they thought it was called pillow fight i have tried two or three of the ofra did i say ofra i meant ofra um i've tried a couple of the ofra i'm not impressed with the ofra eyeshadow formula i just don't think it's great either so i agree with that i saw the most popular most called out brand for least favorite palettes was juvia's place which actually surprised me so much because i have felt like i'm in the minority for not being a huge fan of the juvia's eyeshadow formula i feel like i get like expired why do I keep saying I'm getting expired? This is the second video in the last like five days <laughs> I've said expired um, I really don't feel exp expired. In fact, I feel like more Unexpired than I have in quite some time <laughs> Anyway, I feel like I I buy into the hype of Juvia's palettes a lot And then I'm just never super impressed with the formula like I feel like their mattes are like really hard or like really firmly pressed and just not easy to work with, not the easiest to blend. And Juvia, I agree with. I saw specifically the Juvia's Mauve's six pan called out and then like three or four other times I just saw Juvia's, pal Juvia's place in general called out. So I agree with that, but I felt like I was in the minority and now I feel like I'm not, which is exciting. I guess if bad eyeshadow is exciting to you. Someone said the Ace Beauté Falling For You palette um, and they said that they really struggled with the quality of theirs and I didn't feel like, so I recently just decluttered mine and I talked about it in my most recent like end of year makeup declutter and I actually didn't mind the quality of mine. I just felt like I it wasn't a palette I was like excited for. I wouldn't consider it like one of the worst palettes I've ever tried. I just like wasn't excited to use the palette so I ended up decluttering it. Uh, but I feel like I also saw people talk about Ace Beauté in favorites. So I was kind of surprised to see that. Not that it's a bad thing at all. Um, and also sometimes people just get like dud palettes as well. Or everybody has a different opinion. Coral palette from Juvia's as well. Oh yeah, I... Oh, I wonder if that's the one with like the bluish tones, which I almost purchased as well. Okay, Juvia's was called out like five times. Someone said the Lorac Pro 2, which I was kind of surprised by. I can't remember which Lorac Pro palette I owned, but I feel like the Lorac Pro palettes used to be so popular. I remember owning one before I even watched YouTube, before I like had any understanding of like good versus bad eyeshadow. And then I like had so many empties like i had panned so many shades within that palette it was so old i ended up tossing it and i had purchased another i want to say it may have been the volume one um and it just wasn't like a favorite palette in my collection so i ended up decluttering that one as well and i have not tried to my knowledge i can't recall trying a Lorac eyeshadow palette in general since i feel like Lorac palettes like when i see them they always intrigue me even though they're always like usually like very basic palettes um, but I just don't ever bite the bullet and purchase them. So it sounds like I'm not really missing out on much. Although I do still feel like I hear people talk about loving Lorac. So I don't know. Someone said the BH Cosmetics take me back to Brazil. Not surprised. I feel like that was like before BH Cosmetics really started or that palette was released before BH, BH Cosmetics really was talked about or known, known for having a better, um, quality eyeshadow and I feel like I've heard people talk about even in videos about how the BH Cosmetics Take Me Back to Brazil doesn't have the best quality. Um, I've been tempted to purchase that way in the past and I'm frankly glad that I haven't. 
Someone said the Violet Voss All of You Forever palette and I agree so wholeheartedly. I hated that palette. I ended up decluttering it. It was so dusty and muddy and just such a letdown and disappointment. I think I've decluttered three Violet Voss palettes in my day. Like I've never been impressed with a Violet Voss palette. I've always been super disappointed and super let down by the Violet Voss formula. So I'm glad to, to hear I'm not alone in that. I just realized there's a third palette I actually own um, and I didn't grab, but the Alter Ego Artemis palette, which <clears throat> I like the Alter Ego Artemis palette. And I was gonna say, I feel like it satisfies my itch for the Natasha Denona Metropolis, even though I can still see myself purchasing that. And I still regret not purchasing that as of right in this moment. <laughs> um, but I can also see why people wouldn't like the Alter Ego Artemis just because some of the formulas within that palette I feel like are a little bit harder to work with. There's like some cream to matte shades that I just personally don't like either. So I like don't agree or really disagree with that. Someone said just Bobbi Brown shadows in general, which I have never tried Bobbi Brown shadows. I think I've tried maybe a cream shadow from Bobbi Brown before. Never ever have I been like inspired to purchase a Bobbi Brown palette. So it sounds like I'm not missing out on much. Glad to hear that. I was sad to see this. Someone said the Wayne Goss Imperial Topaz. I have, that's in my Beautylish cart right now. And I feel like I've wanted to purchase a Wayne Goss palette for so long. And when I say I'm sad to see this, maybe I'm not sad because maybe it's actually saving me money. But um, I, I wanna say it was Britt Clark used to rave about one of the Wayne Goss palettes and I have wanted to purchase it ever since I heard her talking about it. And then I saw this and I'm like, okay, taking that out of my Beautylish cart because I mean, I'd rather save the money. You guys are talking me out of things that I definitely don't need to buy. Um, but I was kind of surprised. I don't feel like I've heard a bad thing about the Wayne Goss palettes. Granted, I haven't heard a lot about the Wayne Goss palettes, but I was a little bit surprised to see that one on there. You guys will have to let me know in the comments if you have tried anything from any of the eyeshadow palettes from Wayne Goss and what your experience has been. Someone said the Melts Millennial Pinks palette, which I'm glad that I didn't purchase that. I feel like I almost purchased that just because I wanted to have every Melt palette. But I feel like I've heard a lot of people mention in videos as well that this was just a disappointing palette. So I'm glad I didn't buy that. Someone also said the Violet Voss Flamingo palette, which I feel like I still sometimes think about that palette, but I hold back every time because I've never had luck with Violet Voss shadows. It's definitely the color story that speaks to me, even though it's a very colorful palette and I never reach for color anyway. So I really have no business buying this palette and I, I don't think I will. Um, but I don't feel like I've heard anyone say it was like a least favorite or like a horrible palette. So I was a little bit surprised to see that one on there, but also it's Violet Voss, so I'm not that surprised. And then the last two, oh, there's another one I also own in my collection. Man, I was being lazy. The ColourPop Tinkerbell palette. Not really like, I won't say like I disagree. I don't think it's the worst palette ever, but for ColourPop, I felt like the quality was lacking. It's definitely not top notch ColourPop. It's not like the top notch ColourPop formula. And I didn't feel like the mattes blended very seamlessly together. And it's not a, a palette that I get super excited or inspired to reach for. So I kind of agree with that. It's not like my least favorite palette in my collection. I don't think it's terrible, but it's definitely not the best either. And then the last palette on the least favorite list is the Natasha Denona Sunset palette. I'm so glad I didn't sunset right yeah sunset <laughs> i'm so glad i did not purchase this there was a point in time where i almost bought this too just because i was like buying into the hype of natasha denona and felt like i needed every palette but i ended up not purchasing this and i'm really glad i didn't because i feel like from what i've heard natasha denona's formula has come a long way from that palette and it's just not the natasha denona quality that we get today so very happy that i haven't purchased that and then I have a longer list of favorite palettes and I definitely need to go grab these because I have quite a few of them in my collection. So now moving into the favorites, according to you guys, I'm gonna start with the ones that I don't have in my collection. There was actually quite a few that I did not have in my collection. So I'm gonna start with those to begin just because I have not personally tried, I don't think any of these except for one. Uh, 
yes, one. Um, starting with Lunar Beauty, someone said the Nude Prism Palette, which this looks beautiful and I've never been disappointed by the Lunar Beauty eyeshadow formula, so I could see how this would be an absolute favorite. I also saw someone say the Natasha Denona Mini Zendo Palette, which has been like in and out of my cart so many times, but I've never actually purchased the Mini Zendo. I do own the Midi Zendo, and I was not super impressed with the Midi Zendo, but I feel like I've heard good things about the Mini Zendo. Someone said the ABH Modern Renaissance. I own this for quite some time, but then ended up decluttering it just because I felt like I personally just didn't jive with the color story anymore and the shades that I loved in the palette I had throughout other palettes. I can see why this is an all time favorite staple for just about anyone though. So I don't disagree. It just like, I didn't need it in my collection anymore. Someone said the Pat McGrath Moonlit Seduction palette, which I want so badly for like the one like bluish shade, like the blue brown shade I want. That I, It doesn't make sense for me. It's about $128 for one shade, but that palette does look beautiful. And I just heard someone talking about that palette. I can't remember who it was, but they were saying the mattes in that palette were also really good. So I'm definitely interested in that one. Then I heard someone say the Beauty Bay Dark Fantasy Palette, which I've actually never tried the Beauty Bay eyeshadow formula in general. Someone also said the ColourPop Rudolph Palette you are loving right now, which that palette actually does look super cute. I definitely like side-eyed that one, um, but just didn't need to purchase another palette, but that one looks so cute. Someone is tormenting me and taunting me, and they said the Natasha Denona Metropolis Palette, and yes, I still want that palette. It looks so beautiful. I need to just... I need to just buy that. <laughs> Someone said the Ace Beauté Tropical Vibes, which I have not tried. I do like the Ace Beauté formula. It's not a favorite of mine, um, but I have not tried Tropical Vibes. Many of you, a couple of you said the Blend Bunny formula, and specifically, I don't know if Surge is a palette, but I think I saw the Surge twice. Is that a formula or is that a palette? Um, I do want to try something from Blend Bunny, and I do want to try m even more indie brands this year. I also saw Gourmad Girls Spooked Palette, which I have not tried the Gourmad Girls formula either, but interested in trying that indie brand as well. Someone said the Natasha Denona 5 Pan Palette in the shade 2, but it's been discontinued. Um, Natasha Denona makes a good formula, so I don't doubt that that was a great palette. Someone said the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker Palette. I don't think I've ever tried any Jeffree Star eyeshadows. Like to my knowledge, I can't ever remember trying Jeffree Star, the Jeffree Star eyeshadow formula in general. Someone said the Sydney Grace Where the Wild Things Grow palette. That palette looked, and I don't know if you can still get it, but it looks so freaking beautiful. And Sydney Grace has a great eyeshadow formula. So I feel like that looks like a good one. Someone said the Sigma Alice in Wonderland palette, which that one is still like, I really kind of want to purchase that along with Sigma New Mod. Like those two are still like on my wish list. Someone said the Too Faced bon 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 Bonbons palette, which I never owned that palette. And I, is that, like, I can't even, is that the one with the hearts? I feel like I thought about buying that one for a bit. Um, but never tried Too Faced bon Bonbons. Someone also said Too Faced Sweet Peach, which I have owned and even considered repurchasing because that is truly just such a staple palette. Like, that's such a good palette. I agree with you. That's a, that's a great favorite palette to have. I also saw the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome palette on the list, which I was actually kind of surprised by because I feel like people were disappointed in that palette. And I am wondering if it's mostly because they just felt like it was overpriced. Um, but I will say I've side eyed that palette quite a bit. Like it looked so beautiful. I don't know if you can still get that one or not, but it looked so pretty. And I remember I wanted to buy it and then I didn't want to spend that, that kind of money on a Natasha Denona palette at the time, especially considering I didn't feel like it was an everyday color story for me, but I still sometimes think about that palette because there was like a bright yellow matte in there, wasn't there? And like that was the shade that like really captured my attention. There is something about bright yellow and bright green and bright pink and bright orange. I'm telling you, I can't help myself. And then I think the last one that I don't have in my collection, someone said the Tom Face, the Tom Face, the Tom Ford. Can you tell it's like really, we're getting to the, the final stretch of um, Vlogmas and my brain is just like, I feel like I'm gonna take off the first like week or two of January. I have some pre-filmed um, palette, not palette, uh, project pan introductions and I'm hoping that I can take like a week week and a half off um 
that's just what I'm hoping. Not because I don't love you guys, but my brain is truly fried. <laughs> um, okay. So those are the palettes that I don't have don't have in my collection. Now let me get into all the ones that I do have in my collection um, that you guys consider favorites. So a couple of Natasha Denona minis. I saw Natasha Denona Mini Biba, which I totally agree. I think this is a beautiful palette. I love the Natasha Denona Mini 5 pans just because they're just easy. Like if I'm grabbing something and don't want to think about my look too much, I just, the Natasha Denona 5 pans are so easy. Someone said the Natasha Denona Mini Retro, Mini Retro, yes. And I agree, this palette went unused for me last year and I'm so sad about it because I actually do love this palette. Every single shade with the, this is probably my least favorite shade, but it's still like a fine shade. I, I do, like I love this palette so. I agree with you. I just unfortunately didn't use mine last year because I was a loser. <laughs> I saw the ABH Norvina palette, which I do feel like there's definitely a lot of people who love this palette. And this is a palette I've considered decluttering a few times, but just can't get myself to do it. It's a beautiful palette. It's not my favorite in my collection. It's not my favorite ABH ever, but especially if you like these tones, I could see why ABH Norvina would be a favorite for you. That reminds me, I saw someone talk about ABH Norvina, but I think they were talking about the larger palettes in least favorite, and I forgot to add that. But someone also said the ABH Nuevo palette, and I agree. I thought this was such a great release this year. I love these two shades. I love me a lilac purple, and I love a blue brown shade, but then there's also green in here as well, as well as my favorite shade in the palette is this shade Lily, which is like this pink and blue sparkly lid topper shade that I just think is absolutely stunning, and I was super impressed with this palette from ABH this year. I saw someone say they loved the color story of Melt Gemini. I think they said it wasn't exactly like, it wasn't like the tippity top eyeshadow formula, but in terms of like being a good formula and having a great color story, this was a favorite for them. And I agree, I really enjoyed this palette this year. Sometimes I personally think Melt Cosmetics takes a little bit more effort in terms of blending my shadows and I have to spend a little bit more time with them, but I love their packaging, their aesthetic. They do always have amazing color stories. So I don't disagree with you on that. Someone said any of the Dedessa Myricks Lightworks palette, and I have Lightwork Volume 3. I purchased Volume 4, but I haven't tested that one out yet. I was so impressed with Lightwork Volume 3. I have talked about it quite a bit lately, so I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I truly have no palette like this in my collection. It is truly so unique. There are so many beautiful, just like multi-chrome shades and just, it's so unique and just stunning. Very expensive, but in my opinion, I do think it's worth it. I don't know if I'd consider this, in terms of like special shades, I would consider this a favorite, but it's more of a companion palette in that I'm not creating just a look using just this palette. So, did wanna point that out. Someone said the Glam Light Ice Cream Dream Palette. If you're a colorful, loving gal, Absolutely. This is such a good formula, both mattes and shimmers. The mattes I was super impressed with, especially because they are so colorful. Um, and then I just, I love the shimmer. Like the formula is so good. I just don't reach for color that frequently. But if I am reaching for a colorful palette, this is one of my favorites in my collection. So yes, girl. Someone said the Pat McGrath Brown Seduction. Girl, you have my heart. I love the Pat McGrath Brown Seduction. It's my favorite Pat McGrath Mothership palette in my entire collection. And I've tried four of them. Someone also said the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2, which I have not tried. And that was their favorite. I feel like a lot of people do love the Divine Rose 2. This is just so good. I love the green. I love the gold. I just love this palette so much. I still don't, I would never recommend paying full price for a Pat McGrath palette just because she runs sales on her website specifically frequently enough that I don't think you ever need to pay the full price for a Pat McGrath palette. But the Bronze Seduction palette is still a favorite of my collection and one that I would wait for a sale but would replace if for some reason my palette shattered or got lost. Someone said the ColourPop That's Taupe palette. And I do like this palette. I didn't reach for this palette at all last year. It's a nice palette. It's not my favorite. Um, I find that the mattes, at least in my palette specifically, I felt like were a little bit dustier than I prefer, but I really love the foiled shades. Um, so I need to reach for this again and pull that back out. The only Huda palette I think I saw listed in favorites, but I saw it a couple of times, was the Huda Rose Quartz palette, which I thought was really interesting because I was like, okay, it's the Rose Quartz that's our favorite Huda larger palette. And I will say I did reach for this more than I thought I was going to this year, and I really 
did enjoy it and learned to and really loved it more and more with each use i created some really beautiful like pinky i love a pinky blue like something that's like pink based with like a blue reflect there's just something about that whether it be nail polish eyeshadow what name whatever it is i just love it if it's a pinky blue and so like the shade moon magic i loved um i actually really liked the cream shade um i know we're not all fans of that but i actually loved the cream shade the shade blissful even cosmic love i i agree i think that the rose quartz palette is a great one i really like the huda larger palettes in general i think they're good so definitely don't disagree with that someone said the natasha denona my dream palette which i did really enjoy my natasha denona my dream as well i don't know if this is my favorite of my natasha palettes especially if we're looking at like natasha palettes as a whole i personally love the natasha denona gold a little bit more i feel like this one is just a little bit more like pink purpley I, like i for me i would have i just love like a neutral brown but i still think this is a amazing quality palette and i've created some looks that i really love out of this um i don't think it's my favorite in my entire collection though it, i know it's not <laughs> someone said the odin's eye hella palette and i hella agree with you i absolutely fell in love with this palette this year i love this palette so freaking much and like every shade in this palette it's not like i well i definitely favor the shade but it's not like i favor like one or two shades in here over the other i feel like i've used quite a few of these shades pretty equally but i love the shade double-sided as an inner corner highlight on in my eyes like it's just so beautiful angie did such a good job and you guys know i've been raving about the odin's eye formula lately it's just top notch and a favorite so absolutely agree with that I also saw the lemon cello palette on there which made me so happy because this is my favorite color pop palette in my entire collection it might not be the most colorful but this just hits this just works it has neutral shades very easy for every day but then you have some fun pops in here i love serenade i love capri easy peasy is a fun shade and then i like all the metallic slash, slash shimmer shades in here i think are just phenomenal and i have not been able to like put this palette away since purchasing it in march i think of 2021 was that when I, when I purchased it i think it's such a good one i saw the nars climax palette on the list and i was a little bit surprised i personally struggled a little bit with the mattes in the climax palette Although I will say these shimmer and metallic shades are so beautiful. They're kind of like that gritty formula that's really going to adhere to the eye and be super punchy. So if you like an intense and a bold metallic look, I think you'll really enjoy this palette. It's definitely not a favorite in my collection, but you guys know I've been raving about NARS and just like into NARS lately. So I can't be mad that this is you know a favorite for someone the natasha denona retro palette i was not surprised to see i feel like this is a favorite natasha denona palette for so many and i will say if i'm looking to do a mauve toned purple look this is the palette i'm reaching in for it's such a good one great quality i really do i've really come to love the natasha denona cream to matte formula i think it's incredible and then i love her sparkly shades the shade psychedelic is so pretty and i also really loved glitz and i love this shade helio if i'm looking for more of like a satin taupe rosy sort of shade i just think that one's so pretty the retro palette is one of my more favorite natasha palettes in my collection so don't disagree with that one patrick taught major dimension one yes 100 percent yes this is a favorite palette in my collection i love the neutral warm browns i love the range of textures within the like metallic formulas up top you have some that are a little bit more grittier and chunky that are going to really have such a significant impact on the eye but then you have some that are a little bit smoother and still metallic but that smoother formula that is just really going to look glossy and pretty on the eyes and then you have the um cream shadows as well which are such a fun addition that i didn't think i was gonna love but truly loved them so much sorry i'm so distracted by the football game next up i have the kaleidos club nebula and yes love the kaleidos formula i saw kaleidos 
formula in general just mentioned like not necessarily any specific palette but kaleidos and i agree i think kaleidos has one of my favorite formulas in terms of indie or mainstream eyeshadow brands i think that they have a great matte formula a great shimmer formula or just also different textures within their like metallic shimmery sparkly formulas and finishes um the club nebula palette is so unique to my collection and i could see why this would be a favorite uh i would say in terms of colorful palettes again this is one of my favorites in my collection i love the sparkly metallic shimmery shades within this palette i love the neon green i especially love this bottom row and then yeah it's just a fun one it's absolutely a fun one it is such a good one i agree with that and then <clears throat> to wrap it up someone said the plain jane palette from adept cosmetics which i don't have the plain jane but i have the plain jane remastered and i love this so much if you are looking for just fun special shades like indie shades i highly recommend checking out adept cosmetics so this is just a palette full of special shades and i love it so freaking much this is obviously more of a companion palette similar to like the Janessa Myricks where I usually create a look and then I'm using just like one or two shades to like top my lids, but I still love this palette so freaking much. And then a couple of times I saw the Adept and Heather Austin palette, which I have not tried because I recently purchased this and it just recently got to me. I'm so excited about this one though because I feel like I've heard nothing but good things about this palette. There are four matte shades in here and the mattes in this palette kind of give me like grungy subculture vibes. And then I am personally so excited about the shade Austin and Passport. Like Passport looks like a bluey, pinky shade, which you know is just gonna be my vibe. Also, honestly, this whole palette, I'm very excited to just get use out of. So that those are all of the favorite palettes that i read and that you guys recommended in my community tab as well as my least favorite that is going to wrap it up for today's video i would love to get your feedback comments opinions in the comments below let's chat about the favorites the least favorites other than that thank you so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting my channel palette week and vlogmas i love you guys so much and i will catch you in tomorrow's video bye